Can you believe Christmas week? This is Christmas week. I can't believe how fast the season has went. I've really enjoyed it, even though it's went fast. And we've had some really cold weather move into the mountains of Western North Carolina, and it's been so wonderful. It makes it feel so much more like Christmas, so cozy inside with the wood stove and the cooking smells and the beautiful Christmas tree and all those kind of things. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing another favorite recipe of mine that I make during the holidays, I make during Christmas. Now, this is not one that I grew up with at all. Granny never made this, uh, and I never eat it anywhere else except my own, my own cooking. So after Matt and I was married years ago, his mother, Miss Cindy, she gifted me with some magazine subscriptions. So when I would look through the magazines and read them, if I saw a recipe, I would tear it out and save it, you know, and try it. That's where some of my, like my rolls that I make every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, that's where that recipe come from. And I'm still using it all these years later, the best rolls ever. I'll link to that video in case you've not seen it. Anyway, so this recipe I tore out and I have like a, some people have asked me about this. So this is just like a, just like a, a notebook. A lot of times in school, they'll ask you to buy one of these for, a, you know, maybe for English class or something. And over the years, I would just paste those things uh, that I tore out of a magazine or that someone gave me. I would just get some glue and paste them in here to kind of make my own cookbook. Some of them are not pasted. Some of them are just stuck in there. You can see there's some old ones. So anyway, I got this recipe and I stuck it in there. I don't even know if I had it glued in there at that time. I might have just had it stuck in there like the, these are. And I kept it for a long time, uh, maybe five or six years, and I just never got around to making it. I just, I probably love the name of it because it says Holiday Bread, and I can't remember if it come out of Country Living, Southern Living, something like that. And I've even, when I cut it out, I cut off the person's name. It looks like Susan, so whoever Susan is, I really appreciate her, her giving this recipe to them so many years ago because my family certainly enjoyed it. And so it's holiday bread. That's probably what appealed to me, that, and I love bread. So I'll, I'll read you this little bit. It says, my home on Christmas morning, always bustling with visitors, and between opening presents and fussing over the littlest guest, I never have time to make breakfast. Instead, the day before, I bake this simple stolen, Stalin, Stalin, I guess, a quick version of the traditional sweet bread and set it out for everyone to enjoy with their choice of tea or coffee. It's been such a hit that now I'm baking several for family and friends. Too big a job for last minute, so I prepare some ahead to freeze, and so can you. Wrap in full and seal in freezer weight, freezer weight plastic bags. They'll stay good for up to a month. Now, I've never froze mine ahead. I just make it fresh and we enjoy it. Sometimes my holidays, my Christmas is so busy, just like Susan's. I think it's Susan. I can only, it's like I cut right where her name is. It's S-U-S at the beginning, and I see an A may not be Susan. Anyway, but it's so busy like hers that I don't actually get to make this to maybe after Christmas, maybe right before New Year's, New Year's Day. But this year, I'm, I'm going to make it today so that I can show you how to make it. It's a wonderful, it is a sweet bread. Uh, perfect, she said, with tea or coffee. Also perfect if you put a little bit of cream cheese on it, toast it the next day in the oven. I like that part that she said she makes it because Christmas mornings are so busy. Christmas mornings have always been busy for us too. That's when we open our gifts as a family. Uh, and then uh, always we, our Christmas dinner, we do dinner as we would say in the middle of the day. So always I've got to be thinking about what I'm gonna cook. And when the girls were little, it was, you know, we were in a hurry to get down at Granny and Pap's. Now today I know a whole house full of people's coming here. So I've got to hurry up with that. So what I started doing and before I knew about the bread and I still don't make the bread, especially for Christmas morning but I would make muffins of some kind, blueberry, usually blueberry. Um, I have a gluten-free blueberry one that the girls really like. And then after we open presents or just before or whatever, we would put a candle in them and then we sing happy birthday to Jesus. That was kind of a little tradition and we still do it today. So I did the cupcakes, but this would be really good on Christmas morning. So I'm gonna, as always in the description below, I will put a link and you can jump over to my blog and see where I made it many years ago on there and shared the recipe. But you need two and one third cups of all purpose flour, one half cup of sugar, one and one half teaspoon of baking powder, salt, on the salt now, she doesn't have any, there's no um, little measurement for it. And I think I usually use a teaspoon of salt, maybe a half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of salt. One half cup of cold butter or margarine, one stick. 
one cup part skim ricotta cheese, one cup dried tart cherries or other dried fruit coarsely chopped, one third cup pecans toasted and chopped. I never toast mine. I just never did. I probably didn't read it that first time close enough and then I thought they were okay so I never toast them. One teaspoon of vanilla, one half teaspoon grated fresh lemon peel. That gives it a wonderful taste two large eggs, and then if you want to dust it with powdered sugar at the end, and once it's completely done, you can do that. So now I'm going to show you how to put it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is something I've never done before when I'm making this bread because I didn't know about this little trick. So in the past, I would chop up my butter. It is cold. I've had mine in the freezer for about five or ten minutes. And then I would uh, put it in the in the bowl before I actually cut in the butter. But I learned this little trick from Holman's Homestead. I'll link to their channel so you can go see. And it's to grate it really finely, the butter, before you actually incorporate it. Uh, and they weren't making this recipe, but they, they just said that you could do this with any kind of recipe where, it, where you had to incorporate the butter. And I've been doing it with several different recipes and it works really well. Okay, now that I've got that part done, and I did go over and preheat my oven. I forgot to do that, so I put it at 325. That's what we're going to bake it at. Um, let's see if it tells me. For 55 to 60 minutes. Now, your oven may be different. Seems like it doesn't take mine that long. Anyway, but for now, we're going to get started with the rest of the recipe. So I've got me a big bowl. I'm going to put my flour, my baking soda. Looks like I didn't get my salt, so let me get me some salt. Again, I'm using about a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to put that all together and I'm going to just kind of mix it around. And you know, it doesn't say it now that I'm looking, I put a little more salt. It doesn't say it in the, um, the list of ingredients, but it does say it in her directions. It was one fourth teaspoon of salt. So mine may be a little bit saltier this time. I probably knew that. I probably put that in my blind pig in the acorn where I used it the first time, but I probably um, just forgot that. I should have went back and looked at that recipe. So now I'm going to put my butter in there. See how wonderful that just little bitty pieces and it just makes it so easy to incorporate. Make sure that I get all that from the inside. The rest of this, all the little shavings. Only thing is your fingers are cold and it sticks to them. I should have used my, should have been using this and that make it much easier. Really does work well though, because it incorporates so nicely. I am gonna use my pastry blender and kind of chop it in. Uh, when I first started making this recipe years ago, the only pastry blender I had, I might have even bought it for this, I don't know, but it was really flimsy and every time I I used it, I bent the little things, and it was just a pain to use, especially because I was using hard butter, you know, a big stick of butter in those days um, before I learned this trick. So anything I made back then, it was just difficult. And one time, we loved to go to yard sales. We were staying, Miss Cindy lived in Black Mountain, and we were going around to Asheville to different yard sales, and I found this really sturdy, <laughs> wonderful, I don't know if it's got a brand on it or not, OXO is the brand at a yard sale and I think I paid like 50 cents for it but as soon as I picked it up I was like oh that one's not gonna fold up on me and it hasn't I've still used it all these years later and love it so we're going to incorporate the butter until it's like fine crumbs and so that really helps um, kind of shredding the butter first makes it so much easier to get to that stage okay I think we're there make sure we get all the butter off that now we're going to add our ricotta cheese. We're going to add our your dried fruit. I'm kind of using a combination. I had some tart dried cherries and I think there's some raisins. It was kind of a mixture. So I'm going to add those. And I think I was supposed to put my sugar in with the dried ingredients, but I'm going to put it in now. And then I'm going to add my eggs and my lemon. That's what makes it smell so wonderful. I wish you were here and you could smell it and my vanilla. And the only thing left to add is the pecan, so I'm going to add that. And then I'm just going to start stirring it up. It smells so good. I wish you could smell it. Okay, we've about got, I've about got it stirred up, so I'm going to... It's really sticky still, though. I think I'm going to have to use my hands, though, to really get in there. Get me some 
extra flour here, just a little. It's really a soft dough. Okay, now I've got it kind of all incorporated together. I'm going to put me a little bit of flour out on my pad here and roll it out. There. Put my, make sure I get all that goody goodness out of the bowl. Put it right there on top. And then I'm going to knead it just a couple of times to make sure that it's, it's really incorporated, all of it. It's really a soft soft it's just so delicious smelling i wish you could smell it just to make sure that it's all all incorporated the ricotta cheese really gives it a tangy smell then there's the sugar and the lemon and the vanilla mm, it's just so good so wonderful smelling hear all my bowls rattling down below me as I'm pushing. If you hear a funny sound, that's what it is. Now this part of the recipe, I'm by no means an expert. Well, I'm not an expert about any of it. Uh, I do know it tastes good though. But you're supposed to, um, and it, it does get sticky, so you kind of just have to keep turning it and putting a little bit more flour down. But it, you're supposed to press it out into an oval that's like 10 by 8. There's a measuring thing on my, a measure tape around my pad that I'm using, my baking mat. So I'm looking at it, and I'm getting close. So I think I'm about there. Turn it over one more time. Now I'm going to read the directions because you probably will do better at this part than me. But even ever how I've done it over the years, it always just tastes great. But it says once you do that, the eight by ten oval, fold oval lengthwise, bring in top half over so that bottom of dough extends by about one inch. Maybe I've got more of a circle going than an oval. That may be my problem. Like I said, though, you'll. You'll do better than me, I know. Fold over lengthwise. Okay, that's what I was about to do. Bring in top half over so that bottom of dough extends by about an inch. So see, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I hope it does to you. What I usually do is once I fold it over, I do think folding it over helps with the dough, is that I kind of just start shaping it into the shape that I would want. And I'm sure that's not a, a, a right thing to do for uh, stolen. stolen. Y'all have to even tell me how to say it. I don't know how to say it, and I don't know how to do that part, but boy, I do know that I like it. I like to eat it. <laughs> that's the main part for me. So now that I've got it shaped like I think it should be, like it's going to be for me, it says to, you can use a greased baking sheet, of course, but I've got one with parchment, lined with parchment, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get it right here, get over here, I wonder if I can move it or I may need, a, need to get me a spatula, I might work better, but maybe I'm going to be able to. So this is, this is what mine turned out like, hopefully you can, you can see that, it kind of blends into the paper that it's on, but I'm going to put it in the oven, I'm going to clean up my mess, and then once I get it out and let it cool a little bit, I'm going to taste it and I'm going to show you how wonderful it is. It smells so good, don't it? Mm -hmm. The bread's been cooling. It took about 50 minutes in my oven. You'll just need to double check. It smells so good. I can't wait to taste it. Corey, you want to come taste with me? You want a piece of bread? I'll make I Corey to get in me here. twice. Yeah, make Corey get in here. It just smells so good. Because mm. it is so good. Mm -hmm. mm. Not overly sweet. Mm -mm. 
Mm. But perfect for Christmas, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And it's so good. Like to, it's good today, just like this. But like tomorrow or whenever, just slice a piece and toast it and put some cream cheese on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. A wonderful recipe to make any time of the year, but especially for us, it seems like for the holidays. And I'm so thankful that I finally tried it after having it for so many years. I think I'd had it five or six years before I ever actually made it. And it's so good. I've made it every year since then. It's so good. It'd be good any time of the year, but I only make it at Christmas. I only make it during the holidays, either just before Christmas or just after Christmas. It's just one of those things that I, um, I guess in my mind, I relegate to those special foods that are so good this time of the year. And that's probably why I couldn't exactly remember how the recipe went. So even though I'm like I didn't put the sugar in with the dried ingredients like I should have, I put a little bit more salt than I should have, and I never do the, I can't even, my mind don't work like that. I never get the rolling out part right, I'm sure. I never, not once. But even with all that, it is still so good, isn't it, Corey? Oh, yeah. I mean, you'd never know I made a mistake, would you? <laughs> you can. <laughs> no way. Yeah, so you could good. could eat that whole thing. So good. And knowing that you're a much better baker than I am, yours will be even better if you try it, I know. We hope that you enjoyed seeing how to make this wonderful bread. I wish I knew the exact person that had submitted it, whether it was to Southern Living or Country Living all those years ago, but I really appreciate her. We appreciate you stopping by to help us celebrate Appalachia, and we wish you a very Merry Christmas. That's a wrap. <laughs>